it's still connecting. <laughs> <laughs> We might just be working through some technical difficulties here. So just hold on a minute if you're looking to join the Cockroach Labs office hours. Our host Rain just dropped off the channel, but should be here in just a few minutes. Hopefully you had a chance to join us yesterday for the Practical Python session. That was a really good one. Uh, we can probably pull up a link for you if you want to watch the rerun. Oh, hey. There you are. <laughs> we lost you for a minute. Yeah, I'm so glad you just kept going. That's awesome. You are, you're my hero today. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so glad you just kept going. Yeah, it looks like there's something going on with Twitch and Restream, mm -hmm. and it just completely like. Poof. So here we are. It happens. Hello. Good morning. Did you do the script? <laughs> I did not do the script. I started just scripting just whatever talking. came to mind. Yeah. So absolutely. I had the little absolutely. live thing in the corner of the screen, so I knew there were people <laughs> maybe listening, and <laughs> the music was still going, so that was good. So yeah, just keep Jones in a lot. I love it. Okay, so hello and welcome to Database Office Hours. Um, this is Ask Me Anything about Cockroach TV. Uh, normally, it would have been John St. John. Wait, that way. John St. John and Alistair Perry, um, but Alistair was pulled away on an emergency. So we uh, thoughts and prayers to Alistair and that customer. A little bit thrown off by technical issues, but hello and welcome to Developing with Cockroach TV. This is our office hours every Thursday. We are a developer-focused success program with a series of workshops and office hours to help you tackle your biggest developer aspirations together. And really, we want to know how we can help you get the most out of CockroachDB. Hopefully, you have a little bit of SQL knowledge, a little Postgres knowledge. If you've taken the Cockroach University classes, you're new to intermediate user of Cockroach Cloud, bring us on your journey. Help us learn how we can help you make the most out of the platform and improve your experience. Today is office hours, which normally comes on just beautifully, smoothly, sweetly, and didn't today, but that's okay, because that's what being on the internet is about. And my guest today is John St. John, who is an arch enterprise architect. Can we hear like how you got to SQL? Like, how'd you dive into yeah. you, your database knowledge initially? For sure. Yeah, so I've been uh, developing and working with databases for quite a long time, um, probably, I guess, since the mid to late 90s. And uh, I've worked with a lot of uh, both enterprise and open source databases. So lots of experience with my SQL, Postgres, but also SQL Server, DB2, Oracle. Uh, during the, my last position, I actually took a little bit of a, I wouldn't say a detour, but worked in the consumer privacy space for a company that was building, or currently still is building a platform for companies that want to offer their users kind of enhanced privacy services. Um, like GDPR? And that was pretty fun. Privacy What's services? That? Like GDPR privacy services or security? So, uh, it could both. be GDPR, but more end users. So things like end-to-end -end encrypted messaging, private browsing, password managers, uh, those type of things uh, allow just users to uh, be able to protect their personal information online. Um, so I worked with the 
both internally with engineering teams uh, uh, and also working with uh, directly working with customers who are integrating platforms so as a solutions architect. Um, so have had an opportunity to work with a lot of different databases and I uh, was just really excited and intrigued with the technology at Cockroach Labs. And so it seemed like a great fit and a great opportunity for me. Um, yeah, and I was, I've been actually been with Cockroach Labs for about three months now. So I'd like to say, I think, you know, like when you're riding around on training wheels and yeah, I don't know if you have kids, uh, you can like kind of raise them a little bit so that yeah. they're kind of getting that feel of riding. I Wiggle think they're at the just a little. top. I think they're kind of at the top and we're getting ready to pull them off. Take off the training so, wheels. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I'm on, I'm on a bit of a journey too with cockroach. So, um, if <laughs> is, you're, yeah. Is cockroach your first like venture away from my sequel or? No, has... I mean, I, I've worked with a lot of da databases over the years. Um, so cool. Not, not, not really the first venture off that path, but, um, yeah. I was, we were, yeah, I was pretty hev heavy into MySQL kind of before, I think Postgres became popular and before it split off with MariaDB. Yeah. Um, so nice. early, early open source days for me. Um, yeah. Nice. But, yeah. Nice. And so that's what we're here for. We have uh, about five people watching. Hello. Um, across several different streams. Although I want to say that I can't tell if we actually made it out to Twitch or not, uh, if I'm honest. So we'll hope for that. Maybe if someone's on Twitch, you could confirm that we made it over there, um, both on my channel and on the Cockroach TV channel. And Today is just about, yay! <laughs> Thanks, Luke. <laughs> um, Luke Dobley. Yes, I made it to Twitch. Yes. Um, cool. So we know that Twitch actually connected. Awesome. And I know YouTube connected because I immediately, when Restream was just like cycling through um, and I had a blank page, I was like, did John go live? And so I jumped over onto YouTube I and did. checked really quick and saw you talking away. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yep, just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a thing though. Um, there's actually a comment on the YouTube page on um, CockroachDB's YouTube page from Kurupia that is not coming through on our Restream chat overlay at all. So I'm just gonna read it. And because um, <clears throat> I know Kurupia, um, speaking about technical issues reminds me about devs being on call. How does Cockroach Cloud do on call? Like when there are alerts due to issues which need human intervention to fix. Does Cockroach Cloud have alerts set up or is that only dedicated? I think it's only dedicated right now. Um, but generally Cockroach Cloud, you know, we have a, a team of SREs that work behind the scenes uh, mm -hmm. 24 seven. Uh, so for any issues that might be going on with uh, a cluster, they would be alerted immediately. Uh, if you are on dedicated, you do have access to custom alerts uh, that you can set if you want to be alerted about any issues as well. Yeah. Um, so typically we have, you know, a really quick turnaround time with the, the SRE team on you know, uh, troubleshooting any issues and fixing them. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in, that is definitely a feature that I would recommend get into the cloud ASAP. Cause for me, monitoring is so important. Like I want, I want an email alert immediately <laughs> if, if something needs my intervention, human intervention. I'm going Absolutely. to try posting over on YouTube directly um, to see if I can get it to come through to our chat overlay. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. I think that's that's really one of the big strengths of using Cockroach Cloud um, is is having that you know, not having to worry as much about you know monitoring infrastructure, setting up the systems. 
Yeah, there we go. It's coming through. Thank you, awesome. Luke. Creature. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And Karupia is now coming through as well. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So it seems like it was just a little glitch that seems to be gone. Knock on wood. No worries. Okay. <laughs> And, and John, by the way, now I see your message saying you dropped and it tells me we're live. Oh, I, yeah. I, yep. I really did awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I didn't want the music, music to end. <laughs> right? Uh, the, music, the music can always be on. It would just be this, um, like, probably we shouldn't uh, test technical glitches um, too much. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, that music is awesome. It comes with Restream. Um, and... Nice. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed with what they've got going on. So talk to me about oh. yesterday's module. We did... That was yeah. my first time working with Jupiter. What about you? Are you were you familiar with it before that? or Familiar with it, but actually hadn't really used Jupiter a lot. Yeah. Um, I feel like my Python journey didn't end, but it, it yeah, you know, I haven't really been doing a lot the last five or six years. Yeah, and I feel you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yesterday, I feel like Jupyter was... Notebooks became yeah. popular. Maybe in that, maybe they started to become popular around five or six years ago. Yeah. Well, yes, and except that I felt like a lot of people that were watching yesterday were confused by not flipping over to a terminal or an IDE. Because mm -hmm. um, we got a couple of comments saying, you know, what are you, <laughs> are you supposed to be putting your code somewhere? Um, and so that's where I was like, wait, maybe Jupyter is not as popular as I yeah. think it is. Yeah, that's why I think I, I asked a question. I said to Alistair, I said, oh, how do you, how are you executing that? Yeah. So I think it, it's like command return or something like that. Yeah, and then yeah, it, yeah. It doesn't give a lot of feedback. Like he said, the it turns into a star, and then <laughs> it's it's a bit magical. Um, I definitely need to play. Yeah, and I, I think I was looking at to see if there's any if Jupyter Notebooks. I know it's a Python thing, but looking to see if it there were other platforms supported in it. And I found that there's also like Google offers a something similar to Jupyter Notebook, and mm -hmm. I found instructions for setting up. I think Node.js and that. Um, and maybe in Jupyter as well. So I thought that was yeah. pretty interesting, but I think it's kind of a Python community type thing. Python so if you're not, focused. and I think also a lot in like data science and analytics, I think it's pretty yeah. popular and education. So, nice. yeah, but yeah, yesterday was good. I thought it was really interesting. Um, I think it's definitely, uh, you know, for those, for anyone who wasn't there, uh, that stream is available. Um, I found it because I told Rain that was actually my first live stream ever. So I, I was like, I got to go find it and, and see yes. it. I was like, that's yes. cool. So, um, but it was a good session. You can look at it. And also the Jupyter Notebook is really just a way that you can kind of embed, I don't know, uh, sort of a, well, a documentation or a tutorial with yeah. code snippets that you can yeah. uh, execute and you can actually modify the code snippets and run them and then behind the scenes you know it's as if it's sending those commands to the terminal or to a python interpreter yeah, yeah. Uh, so that it's kind of running them in the background and i thought it was really good because it you know he uh alistair really highlighted um connecting to cockroach with psycho pg2 and he used some of his own personal data which i thought was really fun Excellent. um i so speaking of psycho pg2 I started setting something up for a special guest we're having in a couple of weeks and um, realized also that I hadn't installed any Postgres uh, or ORM or anything on this laptop, which is to my right. Mm -hmm. um, I just switched from being a consultant to being a full-time employee three months ago. Oh, and, nice. and so when I first started as a contractor, I did the hello world apps. I did cockroach university. I did all these things. And when I got my full-time employee laptop for about a month or so, I just kept using my contractor laptop because, 
because I was busy moving. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, hi, full time employee. Woo! Because I was busy <laughs> moving from the Netherlands to the United States. And so I was like, I don't have time to set you up. But it means that, mm -hmm. for example, today, when I was setting up a blog post on Hello World, just simple stuff. I realized that I can't install Psycho PG2 on this laptop and oh. um, all That's kinds of error, like pages of error messages, Ooh. but I could install Psycho PG. Oh, and so huh. my question, long, long preface, how much is that going to mess up the rest of my experience with these installs like what is the fundamental difference between psycho pg and psycho pg2 that's seems like it would be a problem yeah yeah i have no idea <laughs> i have no idea We're, we need alistair here he might know, know. um i don't I know because it's always it's like the you know whether it was psycho pg or psycho pg2 mm -hmm. you just install the thing and then you you use it and i like honestly like going back i don't i don't remember if i primarily was using psycho pg or psycho pg2 at the time um and i don't so, remember with my other laptop if i installed psycho pg2 or psycho pg i do not remember the mm -hmm. amount of error messages like i'll show you i'll show you what this looks like oh, it's no. um i was like that's a lot of red <laughs> And this is, is that blurry or clear? A little bit blurry. A little blurry. For me anyways. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Let me see if switching the monitor will help. Nope. Nope. Or Apparently you... we are not allowed to share our screen today, ladies and gentlemen. Or you could try to make it bigger maybe with Command Plus or something like that. No, that's totally, um, it's doing monitor psyche oh uh, yeah thing where it's like no no you will not you will not share me all right fine no sharing monitors today apparently no sharing screens mm -hmm. um but it was a lot of red and yeah. just pages and pages of red and i was like all right let's see and it looks like predominantly what it was complaining about is that i had python two point something I can tell you in just a sec. Yeah, I know. Green, good, red, bad. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Did you, were you using system Python or did you install? Um... I was using pip. Um, actually, that's not true. I was using pip3 because when I tried to install okay. pip, I also got error messages. Um, I'm scrolling up past the red <laughs> to get to my previous installs. Anyway, I started putting together a repository because I was like, I'm, I'm just doing, um, all of like completely different things. I'll put up my repository after I save this page. Just a sec. I also find, you know, usually I use a, like a, a virtual environment, Python virtual environment. Mm -hmm. sometimes it's helpful because then you can control the python binary and the libraries a little more closely so but i know true maybe there's some psycho pg2 uh dependency that you need that you don't have Is exactly that, like um, a system that more like a system dependency versus like a python module dependency could be the case So I'm basically putting together documentation that goes from our quick start guide, which is for um, cloud, to an actual Hello World app. Because right now our quick start mm -hmm. guide is pretty bare bones. It just spins up the cluster and then you can connect to the cluster and then, um, and then do some SQL uh, commands. I would like to go one step further of 
actually installing Psycho GP, psych, installing one of the ORMs and attaching the an application. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, okay, where is this? Where is this? And I'm writing down all of the modifications that I'm having to do as well, because maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe I am the only one, <laughs> which, is, which is also entirely possible. It could be yeah. ID 10 T's we used to call them. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard when you get that weird environment right. difference, you know, that not a lot of people are getting and they're like, run this command and run this command, and run this command. And you're like, I did exactly mm -hmm. that thing. And my result <laughs> looks nothing like your result. Totally different. Yeah. Totally different. And like even pip, I didn't have pip installed. I have brew installed. Um, yeah. Pip wasn't happy. Um, so I had to use pip3 mm -hmm. and I'm suspect that's because of Python. Um, so good times. So I'm yeah, going to yeah. switch things I, around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, uh, Alistair was using a windows machine. I noticed when I for install Python three that I do need to use pip3, which, um, the yes. command instead of pip, which. You know, I'm sure there's a, I mean, you could link, link the pip library, but pip3 is just as good. But when I was running through it, that was one thing I had to do differently than what Alistair had in the, the notebook. Yeah. Um, so one thing I've been thinking about, so I'm, I'm kind of newer, to right, to Cockroach. And so, and I know we've got a few people on, maybe not a, lot, a ton of people, which is, mm -hmm. is totally fine. But, yeah, you know, we've been doing these, doing these sessions now for, I don't know, a month or whatever. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around what kind of the challenges are that the developers are facing on Cockroach Cloud, because I, I mean, I have a lot of development, uh, uh, application development experience. And, you know, I think what we looked at yesterday and what a lot of our sessions look at, when you think about it, if you boil down, like, what's the Cockroach part of that? Yeah. You're sort of like, well, it's how do I connect? kind of primarily and exactly. a little bit, how do I interact? But a lot of it's, it's not that different. And I think that's super valuable, but then I also wonder, you know, what are the other things that folks want to understand out there? And, yeah. um, yeah. And I think that, you know, some, you know, we, we have a community Slack channel, people post to that. We've got these office hours. We've got a lot of different avenues. Yeah. Um, for people to post to. And I mean, I could think of other, you know, other areas. Cockroach has like very specific features that are unique, super unique in the database world. Um, so that, that covering those is, you know, we, we touch on those, I think in every session. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's obviously really interesting. And we had an architecture session. Um, another one, another area is how do we integrate with other technologies? So yeah, uh, I, and I've been thinking about that a little bit more because I was working on a, a REST API, a Node REST API with mm -hmm. one of the other CEAs. And I was thinking for a developer, you know, you're kind of like, hey, give me a database that works and I don't really have to think about a lot um, or it makes my life easier in some way. Um, at least that's kind of the developers I know because developers, they're thinking about so many things right like the database is probably a small piece it's, of it um, it's yeah exactly it's one small piece and you don't want go on go on <laughs> yeah so where i'm going i think I, i'm kind of going somewhere with this is is because we're, we're you know google or uh sorry cockroach cloud i was thinking about google because i was thinking about integrating with some of the google serverless technologies is serverless you know, a lot of developers are starting to work with more serverless technologies. And I've been playing around the last couple of weeks with Google Cloud Run, which is a basically runs uh, containers in a serverless fashion, which means it's easy to scale out. Uh, it'll scale out, you know, as many instances of that function. Uh, yeah. I was working on a, a REST API. So every time you get a REST API, it's going to hit an instance that's a, of a containerized application. If you get a thousand, it's going to hit a thousand maybe yeah. or a million, you know, it's really, there's, there's no limit. And that's yeah. really, I mean, that's one of the really strong aspects of, of cockroach cloud that I think yeah. that maybe people don't fully understand is that 
is it, it simplifies, I mean, it simplifies your life. You could use a technology like Cloud Run, hook that up to Cockroach DB, and now you've got not just a front end REST API application that scales, you also have a database that scales infinitely for your application. Um, and that's that's super powerful. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I think I want to think about how can we make sure that that message is being received? Yeah. Um, or is yeah. that important? So, so I find that when I'm building an app out, I'm not thinking ahead to scalability. I'm not thinking yeah. about Tokyo. Well, that's not true. I'm always thinking about Tokyo because I'm my grandmother's Japanese, but I'm not thinking about users in Ukraine because I'm in America and I've been in the Netherlands and I've got Japanese roots. So those are the three countries that I think about, but regionally those are three very different places, but that's I don't actually spread. think about my app being able to talk to those three places with very low downtime and very low lag. Yeah. Um, it's just not something that is like an automatic part of my development cycle. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. how much people do think about those things. Like question for the audience, like how much do you think about yeah. scalability um, as well as regional access when you're building out an app in San Francisco or New York or wherever you are? Um, I don't want to assume, where are you all from? Um, we've got about five people watching. Um, so that's representative of five different places. I'm sure you're not all watching from the same <laughs> New York City. Um, or the same room. Or the same room. Um, but it would be interesting to know, like, India. India, awesome. even Even India is a huge country. Like, when you say India, that's... I realize that's just one time zone because India only has one time zone, but even all the way in the north or the south or the east or the west, that's huge. Philippines, nice. Nice. California. Oh my goodness. All right. Philippines. That's awesome. <laughs> and then and then we've got California. Yeah. In California. Oh, it's awesome. so early for you. Here's Vietnam. here's my thought on it, Rain. I mean it's here's the thing. It used to be back, back in the day that, that, okay, either you would have that, that person, that developer who's like, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff and make you, know, we're building this thing and it's going to be, oh, wow, Lebanon. Sweet. We're going to build this thing that is, is, is amazing. And we're going to do all this work. And then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like pre premature op optimization. <laughs> is evil and no we don't need to do that we're building this new service but Simple. what i think has really changed is that it used to be to build that global application took a ton of work right i mean from the mm -hmm. database side we always talk about sharding of course but then everything i mean it takes a huge amount of work what's changed is that all these technologies are emerging that now you don't you can say i'm building an application i'm going to pick up tools that scale and it's not going to make it harder for me sometimes it's actually easier when I was playing with Cloud Run, for example, I took our little sample cockroach node REST API and I already had a GCP account, but I literally just had to run a couple uh, commands from the command line and I had a nice. publicly accessible service that scales uh, running on GCP. I mean, that's amazing. That's like, so I think today you can build it from the ground up. And I think that's why I'm like, hey, you know, this is so important to bring to people because you don't have to build your application against a database that doesn't scale. Um, yes. You can build it against something like Cockroach and you don't have to worry about it so much in the future. And it's going to even maybe make your life easier now, which is really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm so friends from India and the Philippines and the United States and Lebanon. I love you all. Um, I love that we have a diverse audience. Um, are you all concerned about scalability or is it kind of like, you know, it's a database, whatever. 
I just want it to work. Or is it something like, is that in your development cycle to do testing on that? Let's see. It's not a, it's not meant to be a, it's not accusatory. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I'm just curious. There's no wrong answers. There's no wrong answers. <laughs> oh, and then, and then Daniel wants to, Daniel's like, I want to talk about something else. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, can you talk? So Daniel wants to know uh, about uh, Cockroach GB connection pooling best practices mm -hmm. and how you can achieve that in Python. Great question, Daniel. Yeah, sure. I can talk about that. So I'll just give a little brief overview of connection pooling. So yeah. when you, I guess when you establish a connection with any database, whether it's cockroach or, or another one, there's going to be some overhead associated with it. Um, that may be just even just with the kind of S TLS exchange, uh, it's going to cause a certain amount of uh, time to make the connection. And it's going to take a certain amount of resources on both the client side and the server side to make that connection. So so the approach of connection pooling is, hey, instead of creating a new connection every time, let's just reuse the existing connections uh, on the client. So there's client and there's server side pooling. Typically we're talking about client side connection pooling. So in typically in a library like PsychoPG, you can, instead of just creating a connection straight away, you may want to create a pool and then define that pool with the number of connections that you want to uh, maintain in that pool. So, so let's say you create a pool with 10 connections, uh, up to 10 connections, then when your application goes to uh, establish a connection with the database, it'll first look into the pool to see if there's an available connection. If there is one that's not currently being used, then it'll utilize that connection. And if not, it'll look to see if it's already at the max number of connections in the pool. If it's not, it'll create a new pool connection and use that. And then finally, if it's hit the max connections, then it's gonna go into basically a waiting cycle for one of those connections to free up. Um, so generally, you know, we always recommend that people use connection pooling. And uh, off the top of my head, I I don't have, I can't remember if Alistair used connection pooling. I don't think I don't, he did. I don't remember it yesterday. Yeah, I think there's some, um, I could try to find in the doc our documentation where they have a connection pooling example, but I'm pretty sure there's a Python connection pooling example, probably using specific psycho PG2. And then, you know, one thing is a lot of people use RMs. That's like maybe another interesting question for the audience is, are you primarily interacting with the database through an ORM or directly through like a SQL driver? Um, I find a lot of developers do use ORMs. And so something like SQL Alchemy, it's been a little while since I've used SQL Alchemy and I think I used it primarily through um, the application framework Django, but there's a lot of the connection pooling built in. Um, so kind of what you want to choose that connection pool number to be is, is kind of a tuning exercise. So I would recommend starting with having a connection pool. You have to kind of look at how many clients you have. Um, you know, if you're talking about a large number of clients and you know, you may tune it differently than if you have, you know, small number of clients, say like a, a backend REST API service that's just managing like all the connections to the database. Um, yeah, so we do have a document on connection pooling, but the two examples are written in Java and Go. Okay. So totally, now that we've been specifically asked for Python, example let's add that to the request it's a great question yeah thank you daniel yeah also another another aspect is thinking about uh so i'm not sure what the recommendation is if you're uh, experimenting with uh cockroach cloud free um which right. is going to be different than kind of the dedicated right uh i'm not sure what the recommended connection pool sizes. Um, obviously, if you said, you know, let me 
uh, spin up, you know, a, a million connections and uh, we'll have some limiting on our side. So there's probably uh, an optimum number you could, if you're using free, you could play around with that. I think when you get into dedicated, then it depends on the number of nodes you have and the size of the nodes and those type of things. Yeah. And that is the only doc that talks about connection. Oh, that's not true. I actually found a GitHub issue between Magic Stack and CockroachDB and co and connection pooling. That's mm. so cool. <clears throat> but that looks like it's the only um, doc on our official docs page. So that's definitely something that needs to be added. Thanks for letting us know, Daniel. When we get Alistair back on here, that's one of the questions we'll ask him specifically in Python, sir. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the uh, examples we have of mm -hmm. just connecting with Python, and I don't think they use pools. No. Yeah, no, it's, you probably it's, looked at that. Yeah, it's more just straight connecting. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, you highlighted it, Rain. Like I'm really also interested in learning from the developers, what are the perceived gaps in the documentation? I saw something on, we do have a community Slack channel. Yeah. And I saw a question this morning. I was about 15 minutes before the call, kind of frantically scrolling around to see if there's anything interesting in there to talk about. Yes. Um, but nice. I, I was like, oh, I should have done that an hour ago because it takes a little time to read through all the comments, but I did see one that was about Python, it said, Hey, I really like the examples you have, but they're all pretty, pretty basic. Yeah. What's your recommendation on, um, maybe it had to do with pooling actually. I'd have to look at it. Um, Daniel, were you on our community Slack? And Daniel. Who said Daniel? That would be awesome. By the way, that would make my little heart sing. If, if you tried on multiple channels and were the ones that found the gap and we fixed it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. This was, this was Mike Brancato and he said, are there any good examples of highly concurrent async Python usage with CockroachDB? Nice. Uh, this was a, a really interesting question. He said, all the Python examples are effectively very basic. Very that basic. I could yeah. find. We tried putting yeah. a CockroachDB cluster into an existing workflow, inserts only, and it yep. ke can't keep up with our requ request rate. Latencies are extremely high. We think cool. it might be related to connection pooling. Um, um, that's exactly that's and really... and then kind of tying it into what I was talking about earlier. It said we're specifically using K native, but something like uh, functions as a service or Lambda example would be very helpful. So this is like cloud run. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, it's all kind of coming back together. It's like, what do I do? How do I do connection pooling if I've got serverless functions running because that I almost think it kind of depends on what the function does. If it's a, if it's like serving API requests, then actually connection pooling may not even be relevant because right. the way a function as a service works is it spins up and spins down. So, right. um, it's not going to be servicing multiple requests at a time, but then that also calls into question, how do you control your connections? If you get a million requests and it's trying to spin up a million connections to cockroach. And that, I think that might need some more, more work and research from, from our side to so think my through best practices on that. Is working on his all things open talk, which is soon, not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> I'm not panicked. You're panicked. Um, it's, it's like our first work travel in oh, a year and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. Where um, are you going to? <laughs> Excuse me. I need to breathe for a second. Um, is so we're the Devrel group is going to KubeCon North America. Oh, yeah. so we'll be there. Yeah. Monday through Friday, and then we're flying from LA to North Carolina to All Things Open, um, and we'll be there through oh. Wednesday, and then Wednesday we the, fly back. The so conference is All yeah. Things Open. 
Yeah, that all things like open cool is a great conference that focused on open source. Um, primarily sponsored by uh, organizers are associated with Red Hat. Yeah, all things open is brilliant. Um, cool. And opensource.com. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I've never had an excuse to go. And I've always been involved with projects that have so many conferences that I can't add any, but all things open is like, it, we're sponsoring it. We're helping sponsor it. And I didn't even have to say, this is an awesome conference we should sponsor. It was just done already. And I was like, <laughs> my people. Um, That's great. Adrian is working on a talk specifically uh, that uses functions in a, as a service in Lambda and CockroachDB. And um, Python is not one of the languages he played with. He, he basically wanted to build an application where you could switch out the language on the fly. And so he built it in JavaScript and Rust, I think. And, and yeah, that would be a great question for him to That's see cool. if he was experience because because it's yeah. part of a live demo um he's actually going to at all things open be like here it is it's basically where you message this phone number and it goes through twilio and da 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 and it with your github username and it sends back a picture with thanks for your talk thanks for coming to my talk and then a pic your picture from github um and then he and then he switches it out mid talk and see and it's like see it takes five minutes to switch over, blah blah blah. Mm. But let's see if we can make it crash, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. all things open kind of thing. Because will the database be able to scale? You know. Yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah, I mean, when you look at, um, yeah, definitely, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of thoughts on that. I was looking at um, this this upcoming talk on the Node.js REST API, and I was searching for other examples. And Adrian actually does a, a live live stream, and he had he mm -hmm. done a live stream, I think, on that exact topic. Um, mm -hmm. I think that he does separately. So I, was, I messaged him and was like, "Hey, um, that's cool what you're doing. <laughs> Looks fun." But, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll have to connect with him. Yeah, yeah he streams think... every Friday at mm -hmm. four. 1500 I think 1500 Eastern time and it's just casual coding Fridays he's just playing around but lately he's been working on this particular app to prep for this show cool yeah cool yeah you two should yeah. talk yeah definitely yeah so I have a like recently I I, I have a side project and I it's uh I just love to just tinker with it and do things that aren't necessarily efficient because <laughs> it's, I just, I'm a big like learner. So I mm -hmm. just like to learn a lot. That's so how you learn. That's how you but learn. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I was like, Hey, what if I, uh, my last company was a big, it, they, they moved to become a big AWS shop serverless and uh, lambdas and stuff like that. They're using mm -hmm. like, they're using like the Legos of AWS, you know, plug and play everything, DynamoDB, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. uh, I, I've always been more of a open person. Like, yeah, I think I would love that conference. And I used to go to like OSCON and stuff like that. And yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a little late for this year, but you should come. That's quite a few years ago. I just don't really, yeah, I don't really. But anyways, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love that stuff. But so I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna take that approach. I'm gonna take all the Legos that AWS provides and see what I can build. So I started building like the, you know, with lambdas and stuff like that. And the one thing I've got to say is, I don't know if it's a good idea necessarily to go with all AWS. AWS. That's your own personal preference. But right. um, totally. But I think there's there's a huge strength. And I think there's there's an opportunity to really accelerate development through serverless. And again, plugging Cockroach Cloud, like I, it's. <laughs> so what I did is I I actually um, let's see. First, I I moved everything. I containerized it a few years ago. Put mm -hmm. it in a Kubernetes mm -hmm. just for fun, you know, probably overkill. But my database, I used um, uh, Google SQL for my SQL. 
And then when I went to AWS, I was planning on using RDS. Um, I didn't know anything about Cockroach, but you kind of, you know, the way databases typically are is they're sort of like outside of your scalable system a lot, because you're like, mm -hmm. I've got this totally separate set of scaling parameters. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. And, uh, and, and with Cockroach Cloud, now suddenly you're like, my database, it doesn't have to be like just this single unit that I'm going to have to worry about scaling and all that stuff. And that's, that's the cool thing. Like, and it potentially makes your life easier in that way. Um, exactly. And for cloud platforms, I don't know. Um, I think there's no. benefits to all of them. I'm more of like an open person. Like I think that was one of the reasons why I was drawn to Cockroach DB as well. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, very open and you can dig through source code if you want. Um, it's not just open in open, open source, open, um, but it's also a very open company. Um, yeah. So I think because of that, I, I don't know if I have a particular preference on platform, but I tend to gravitate more towards technologies that aren't going to necessarily lock you into a specific platform. And that's, um, right. I think that's something that we've really gone for Cockroach Labs as well, is we want to provide something that you can use you can play. across any cloud provider. And even yeah. if you have like an on-prem type usage, and that's that's awesome. I love that. I Have you played with OpenShift then? Because it does have, you know, OKD, uh, OpenShift yeah. version of, the open source version of OpenShift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of opens there a little bit but not probably not enough like i need a good good project to really yeah yeah. yeah yeah i i really like when i'm learning i have to have a second agenda to that actual knowledge in hail like yes i want to learn about the different like databases but if i don't have a storyline or something to connect it through or a project to connect it through, then that knowledge will be there for as long as it takes me to give a talk or mm -hmm. read on the page. And then it just leaves the building. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, definitely need a project. And, and yeah. apparently my sound is going to come in and out all day. Can you hear me again? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, and so that's that's a question also for the audience is uh, what are you all working on these days? What are you learning these days? Um, I find that those tend to be interconnected, but they don't have to be, of course. Mm -hmm. And maybe adding on to that, if if you are using another database primarily and you've kind of explored Cockroach where there's, are you continuing on that journey? Are you, are there any like things that you kind of wish were there in Cockroach or you don't understand that yes. what could help you further that same. journey? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah. And we'll just keep talking until <laughs> questions. Yeah, we're here for you today. Um, and we have only 10 minutes left before we pop off again for the week, but this is your time. Um, mm -hmm. We're here to answer any questions you may have about Cockroach TV, Cockroach Cloud, Cockroach On-Prem, um, but we're really, we're here just to help uh, further your journey as a developer. Um, so let us know what, it, what we can answer for you. Um, mm -hmm. I love that we have people from all over the world right now. Um, yeah. India, Philippines, California, Lebanon. It's awesome. Yes. And it's definitely, it's quiet at the beginning, but we were having technical difficulties, but it's, it's back up to our average. So, <laughs> but also California is coming online and that's what usually happens. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's been missing from my life is Cockroach University lately, um, which has been down for a couple of weeks now. 
And I'm wondering how much people are noticing um, as well, because from my life in that Cockroach University is one of the first resources I name when people are like, I've never tried this before. I'm like, here's the quick start. Here's Cockroach University. Here's the Slack. Here's forum. Here's office hours. Like it's, it's kind of in that order. Um, and Cockroach University has been down and I'm wondering, are people missing it? Cause they're also available on YouTube those classes, they're just not interactive. Yeah, especially the one for Java, for Python, I mean. I literally just looked at it and then said Java because it's right above it. Yeah. Oh. Click. There you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's available on YouTube. Um, sadly, all of the links for, um, Cockroach University, <laughs> like I go into university.cockroachlabs.com and it goes, we're currently unavailable, but here's all the courses on YouTube. And I'm like, well, that's sad, but also thank you for the resources, <laughs> which I think is brilliant. Um, so hopefully it'll be up in the next couple of days, I hope, because I would love mm -hmm. to talk about it at KubeCon and all things open. And mm -hmm. so you come from an open source background. Um, yeah. How'd you get into open source? What was that path like? So I was, I was thinking about this recently, kind of in relation to this series and thinking about, mm -hmm. um, so for me, you know, I was largely self-taught, um, mm -hmm. I, and so I think, you know, my I think my main kind of coming to coming coming to software was in the late '90s, really. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, open source was, I think, just getting big and growing, and a lot of the tools that were freely available and that you could download tinker with maybe yeah maybe a bit of a tinker or two okay yeah. i really liked i mean there's just so many amazing tools that were available and yeah. i also just like the community you know it's yeah. i think there's a, a side of it that really touches me where it's not just about i mean it's about people who are working together building things together and often for not for profit not for yeah. selfish motives and it kind of attracts a certain group of people so mm -hmm. i really i guess i just really really enjoy being part of that community yeah. and i've never been a big contributor but um i guess a participant and actually i i think that's always been that like kind of on my mind like yeah participating is is contributing Simple. because yeah especially yeah. if you're letting people know like filing those bugs and those like when there's a typo in the doc, mm -hmm. um, I was watching a commercial the other day and it had a typo and I was like, Hmm, if this was open source, I would file a doc, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I very much come from an open source background. Um, I'll get into it next week because I'd love to answer this question, ORM versus vanilla SQL drivers, which mm -hmm. one has best performance in terms of latency? Do you have benchmarks? Off the top of my head, we don't have those benchmarks. We tend to um, partner with ORMs and drivers that partner back and we hire contractors to help us get those going if we need to, but sometimes with companies. Um, that's a great idea because one of the things we do have benchmarks on is like cloud platforms. And so mm -hmm. having benchmarks on the ORMs would be a great idea as well. What are your thoughts on that, John? So I think it's, um, this might be kind of self-evident self in, in the question, but it's kind of uh, SQL drivers versus kind of the difference between SQL drivers plus the ORM that sits on top of it. Cause it's really, so that's probably one of the reasons why we don't really benchmark that. Um, cause mm -hmm. the, the ORM mm -hmm. is going to have its own 
kind of performance characteristics. And my feeling is that there's a lot of, of work that goes on on the database side um, for query optimization. And, and when I uh, using, I mean, actually in Cockroach DB, in Cockroach yeah. Cloud. Um, so, uh, at, you know, doing cost-based analysis on queries and optimizing them for best performance. Um, and so I feel like the, I feel like that's kind of, our benchmarks are really about queries hitting Cockroach DB, Cockroach Cloud and seeing what, the, you know, how it performs and benchmarking yeah. that. Um, so my feeling on ORMs versus SQL drivers is there's a lot of benefit that you can get from an ORM in terms of develop using development um, yeah. because it does a lot of work for you. So what yeah, I found yeah. over the years is that a lot of folks that use it, I'd say a lot of newer developers aren't as familiar with SQL mm -hmm. and they rely pretty heavily on ORMs. And mm -hmm. if it, I think it pays to get familiar with SQL because ORMs can only do so much. And you, yeah, you, you, you want to be able to look at a query and be able to hand optimize it a little bit where the ORM doesn't work. Say so ORM might work for like 95% of the cases, but it's oh, yeah. super important that those 5% that you're able to look at it and analyze it and make it, you know, optimize it outside of the ORM. 100%, 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, <clears throat> shout out to Daniel who have asked two amazing questions today and to everyone else who has interacted Karupia, awesome to see you as always creature next awesome to see you as always and um welcome to india and philippines and california and lebanon yes i love it so we are going to be here next week i want to say it's a node js app that we're going to work on in the module and John and Jesse, right? It's going to be you and Jesse. Yeah. And I think yesterday I might mm -hmm. not be totally correct, but I think we might have uh, bumped it out to the next week. So yeah. maybe stay, stay tuned and we'll yes, definitely stay tuned. keep an eye out for the announcement because it may be the following week. Yeah. I know that a lot of us in the DevRel group and our regular producer are all going to KubeCon next week. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be up to the customer success people to entirely host this show. No, we can't do it. Doable. You can, you can. <laughs> you have to teach me how to do the intro and outro music, though. <laughs> you can totally do it. I have to. Um, cool. But if if you all want to wait until we're back, then we will be back on after all things open. So then office hours in two weeks. Um, but otherwise, stay tuned to wherever you're watching from. And thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, we, we really appreciate it. Soon. <laughs> I will see. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone.